two TC or two tower chimps. In a single game of chimps, you can only place down two towers, and those two towers have to beat the 94 rounds that consist in a chimps game. Was it 95? Yeah, it's 95 actually, my bad. So we're going to be doing this with the Archmage. Sorry. <laughs> trying to do this. The Archmage and the Beefy Apache Prime. They both have a common weakness though, and that's purple balloons. But with the missiles and the rotors, the helicopter will be able to circumvent its weakness to purple balloons. So let's start this with a good old standard wizard monkey. Unfold the umbrellas and let's get cracking. We're going to go to fireball and then water fire. So fireball, then guided magic, then water fire. And then we're going to go for an IFR helicopter. I tried this on balance, but on round 96, the sheer amount of balloons that there are, are simply too much for both Archimage and the Apache Prime to be able to deal with. There's too much pierce required in order to deal with everything when all the balloons are within the small circle in the map. So if I had a successful run at testing that on the balance, then I would be able to do this on balance rather than resort. But I always find resort to be that one map which I can guarantee will be able to put together a strategy in order to do this with. So Archmage and Apache Prime for this particular challenge. It was requested by a person in my comments. I've forgotten who it was now, but good suggestion because they are both very, very optimal towers to have. We could get Arcane Blast to make our magical bolt set a bit more powerful, but then we won't be able to afford the IFR for round 24. For when the first camo balloon arrives, the helicopter will be able to deal with all camo threats until we get the Archimage, and then that can decamo fire balloons by default. Even though naturally it can't target them, it can decamo fire them. So it's the only tower that can decamo fire balloons that can't by default target camo balloons. Let's get our helicopter, and just so they're both nice and snug together, we will be having them both together. Also found that on balance, if you want to pop all of the balloons on round 25, or purple balloons, sorry, you have to put it on patrol point where it swivels near the small circle in the middle of the map, otherwise it won't be able to reach all of the purple balloons in time. Otherwise, what the purple balloons do, it removes the wall of fire here so oh not there please not there because it just removes the pro projectiles of any magic balloons that are in the confines of the mon i don't know where i'm going with that but it literally means that if any any immunities hit then the projectile itself is just dud it removes itself so darts versus leads magic versus purple you get the gist. I hope you get the gist anyway, so otherwise this has been a gigantic waste of time. Okay, so the heli pilot cannot pop these at this given point in time, but the wall of fire can. What we're hoping to do is get razor rotors, and then no matter what lead problem comes our way, we will be able to snuff them all out. We're also going to keep this thing on pursuit as well, so that, well, it pursues all of the monkeys, let's just say that. So all of the, the balloons. I swear I pressed that. Thank you. Now we've got the Razor Rotors. How some people are able to do two tower chimps on expert maps is just absolutely mind-boggling. Like, I look at each and every map of Binky, there's just no way I can put any kind of combination together, which enables me to be able to get close to doing that sort of thing. So, in the community, there are so many incredibly talented and smart people who are able to fathom out the impossible in this game. Like, there's also someone who wants me to do a special Poperations Two Tower Chimps, and I'm thinking, really? Like, Downdraft, the Support Chinook, they're all incredibly weak by themselves. Like, the only kind of power that you get out of it is the Marines that you spawn from a special Poperations ability. And how would you, how would you even go about that? Like, you have to put it in a really, really designated place. Like, I know ISAB's done a video on it, but I'm nowhere near as talented as most other people are at this game. I always say this, I am not a very good player at this game. 
and I know a lot of people disagree with it, but I don't like to view myself too highly because there are a lot of people out there that view themselves too highly in which they are not. I mean, you obviously have to self-praise yourself, but people do it sometimes to the extent where they get over cocky and overly ambitious to the point where the objective is lost and the only thing that you can see is success and not the lessons that you learn from that objective in the first place. We're going to go for Apache Dart Ship before we get Arcane Spike. That's only because we want to increase our camo popping as soon as we can. And we can do that with the Apache Dart Ship, but we cannot do that with the Arcane Spike. We can only do that when we get the Archmage, which will be able to inherit the Skimmer and the Dragon's Breath from the other cross paths by default. It is a true wizard of all paths, but it cannot summon phoenixes and it cannot spawn the undead, which to be fair, does make it a little bit more balanced. Otherwise it would be a very, very, very broken tower for 34,000. You have to put it like the same price as the super mines, for example, if you're gonna perceive that. Oh wait, we've already got a thing. It's called the Majors Perfectus. But I couldn't imagine the Majors Perfectus the same price as for Spike, but as for Supermine, sorry. Ooh, they're making it quite far along the track. When I was practicing for imbalance, round 49 was really a walking apart. So on a map like balance, the focal point of the map is the very center where the balloons have to go around the small circle several times before it can exit out of it. And that's the main focal point of all of the pops. So if you are able to manage to get all the balloons to be in that little square or in the in, in the balance map, that circle, that's brilliant. And also this is better on a locked position so that you're able to get its rotors to cover all of the small circle in the center of the map. You can utilize its poppage to the very max. But try it for yourself. Try these two towers on balance to see if you can get better results. I managed to get to round 96, but that was the best that I could do. Arcane Spike is up and running now. This thing will be a very, very competent tower. Well, except against camos and purples. But we will rectify the camo issue once it gets to Archmage. Purple issue, though, we're going to have to solely rely on the Apache Prime in order to do that. I wonder what the, uh, the radius of a wall of fire is. Because I'm just trying to see if if I can put it in this little square here and it affects the entire square or I do have to put it on the track because at the moment it doesn't look like any balloons are being engulfed in flame so maybe put it in the square here is a bad idea rather than putting it on let's say the top portion of this square where it's directly on the track so would the water fire be more powerful directly in the center of the flames or can it affect all of these? But I don't know. Let's see. This is actually the test. Round 63. Can it affect all of these? And I don't see any in flames. So I'm going to say that is a failure on that part. Because Gwen's cocktails can be placed in the center here. And it affects all the, um, the balloons that are within this little square. But I imagine that has a wider radius than the wall of fire has. I'm trying to be too optimistic here rather than being not optimistic enough. We will get Archmage first and then Apache Prime. Solely because then with the Archmage, it can decamify balloons and its main attacks can then pop camo balloons. But I think it is definitely the only tower that has a means of decamification, but its default attacks cannot pop camo balloons. That is unless you go bottom path rather than middle path, but honestly, I would prefer the additional firepower than being able to uh, see camo balloons early on within the game. Although there could be a counter argument to that. Like the, uh, the, what was the other thing? I've forgotten what it's called now. The intense magic might be better with the top part, but then again, the water fire just provides another means of attack and also the fireballs as well. It's got in total three different means of attack. The magical bolts that it fires, the fireballs and the wall of fire. And the Dragon's Breath as well, let's not forget that when it gets to Archmage. But it's saying that nothing ever gets close when it talks about the Wizard Monkey, or whenever we talk about the Wizard Monkey, nothing ever gets close to the Bugs Magus Perfectus where it constantly throws out Dragon's Flames and Walls of Fire 
when you are able to upgrade the warp to the mage's perfectus while its ability is active that's something that i do miss but it it was a bug let's just be honest it was a bug but it was one of those bugs which were very good normally bugs are bad but in some cases bugs are good but we understand why they get stamped out because they're not intended to be in the game and in update 38 the relentless glue should not be stunning the bfbs and the zomgs but it does do that round 73 is coming to a close 74 is here we are one k away from the arc mage and then our camo issues will be dealt with let's see yeah still it's only the helicopter that's attacking the fit there we go the camo bullets now this can join in the fray of the camo hunting or the decamifying balloons and then they just become normal balloons but initially the ifr is an absolute necessity here and now you probably think well why didn't you pursue bottom path helicopter with apache prime it's able to attack faster why didn't you pursue that route what are you silly at the game do you not know the mechanics of balloon tower defense six and the fact if you go bottom path rather than top path then the helicopter will be able to attack faster well, on round 24, then it wouldn't be able to attack camera balloons when it was the only thing that could attack camera balloons. But that's not the point, because now we're on round 77, and both both, both, both towers are able to target camera balloons. By the way, I'm only talking to the 0.0001% of you watching. The others totally get what I mean, but there are some people out there that unfortunately are incredibly overzealous with their comments, and I have to delete it just because of their overzealous nature. It's like you're really defying what i am trying to perform here in the video and then that kind of comes off as counterproductive you're wasting my time and you're wasting your own time with sometimes an illogical comment anyways we are here for the 2tc not for rambling on about some people's comments so let's put that aside Round 79, we've got our counter with regrow rainbows and BFBs and fortified BFBs at the end of the round. Here we go. Here's the first fortified and there's the second fortified. I wish that we could have both top hats and sunglasses because in update 38, one of the new uh, shop items was the sunglasses. But you can't have it with the top hat, which I would think would be pretty cool actually. Like you can have like visors and anything else that's not a visor or the top of the head of the balloon the middle of the balloon and the bottom of a balloon imagine balloons with pants like that would be <laughs> that would be pretty silly i'm not referring to like british pants i'm referring to american pants as like trousers trousers sorry i wish the apache prime would not fire lasers but just fired more powerful darts because we're able to circumvent our lead problem with both the rotors and the missiles. But why lasers? Like, yes, they're more powerful, ideally, than darts because of, well, the super monkey. Firing off darts, it's twice as powerful as darts. And they're able to pop frozen balloons. But it's for, cat it's for purples. Purples are a much bigger threat than frozen balloons because the only thing that can form frozen balloons are either the ice tower or... A century expert when it spawns out the ice centuries 285 and 241 so they're pretty balanced at the moment i don't know if we could do the same thing that we did with the pirate lord and aircraft carrier on logs where we get one million pops each with both towers uh we'll see how we go but i think as time goes on the apache prime will steamroll ahead because of well its natural advantage of being anywhere on the map, whereas the Wizard Monkey, like most other towers, can only be in one place at any given point in time. Round 87 is here, and another ZOMG, or a set of them, has spawned. This was another round for me that was quite struggling on balance because I was just short of getting the Apache Prime, which is what we really needed. But if he changes targeting just a little bit so that it doesn't pursue a uh, doesn't pursue a particular balloon and it's able to disperse its missiles out just towards a certain uh, 
ZMG, so therefore you target them independently rather than trying to pop them all at once. Oh, speaking of Apache Prime, we have no got it. Yeah, these lasers are more powerful, but it does come at a cost of partial purple immunity, which is not good to rely on the missiles to pop the purples, which is a big threat for round 95. Actually, speaking of which, round 95 was a complete breeze with these two on balance, because both of them, once they're within the center, both of them can do their maximum potage. Sorry, poppage, not potage. <laughs> Round 90 is here, and the DTs are dealt with. Once the skimmer takes place, then the Archmage can target the DTs. Round 91. We are dealing with all these just fine. Round 92 is here. We've got all this map space to utilize the Apache Prime. Another advantage with middle path alongside being able to see camo is the helicopter's ability to move faster as well, which can be helpful in certain situations. Like if you're trying to pursue a particular kind of balloon, I'm looking at you, DDT, and being able to keep up with it. Whereas with just a bottom path, it struggles with keeping up with the faster balloon. So let's say here, it's able to keep up with the DDTs, and that's only because we have the bigger jets. Whereas with a bottom path, yes, we can fire faster, but we struggle to keep up with the faster balloons, like say with DDTs, with the blue Moabs, with the pink balloons, although they're not much of a threat. Round 95, and you can hear sometimes that the purple balloon blocks the projectile. But that's what it does to the lasers of the Apache Prime, which is why I think it's a bit of a um bit of an annoying upgrade to pursue simply because of the fact that well. Lasers are no good against Bebus. But here as well, we have ourselves a little... Well, we did have a little bit of an issue. But yeah, this is a round that killed me on balance. But it's just simply way too many balloons. Too many fortifies as well, for that matter. Fortified Moabs and regular BFBs. And then ZMGs follow shortly after that as well. But on this map, we can target them more independently before they get to the little circle of balance. I'm not talking about a experience that I'm not even showing on screen, but I'm just describing because I think, why not try it on an intermediate map and see if we can do that? Try in th this combination on an intermediate map, but I don't think it's just, I just don't think it's going to work for me anyways. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who think, oh, I'll be able to do it without a heartbeat. Just place the helicopter here and the, uh, and the Archmage here and then it'll be completely easy. I'm able to walk away from the computer and just let all of the balloons, sorry, all the towers do their work. Great, the ZMGs are here, which means there will be a lot of projectile blockage because of the sheer amount of pierce required to affect all of these balloons. Are we able to get through this just fine? Well, I hope so. There's this last little stretch here, and we are kind of struggling against these super surround... Oh, great super ceramics. I hate these abominations. Well, at least we've got the Archmage at the very end of the track to help us out. If we have any difficulties, which we are going to have difficulties here. Okay, we dealt with all of them. Good. The only fortifies left of these freaking DTs. And... Round 99 is what we call a huge struggle. Yeah, a big... A big struggle. How the hell are we able to do this? Let's try so it's locked in place here. See if we have better luck here, but it's just not going down. Really? Is it going to be fortified DTs that are going to be our end here? Because that's going to be really annoying if that is the case. Oh, 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 oh. Holy gosh, how did that happen? How are we able to circumvent those fortified DTs where? Obviously, pursuing them would have been a better option. It might be just because we're utilizing our PS better so it hit more DETs, but I don't know about that one. Tell me the reason why putting it locked here would be better than pursuit. I'm honestly not going to try and think about that one now because we went through that round swimmingly. Maybe we should do better with our water fire, honestly. Put it where the bed is. And then, there we go. Yeah, I will be able to solve the DT issue much better because we don't have twice the health. I don't know, how much health do the fortified property give to balloons? It's going to be something like at least, well, at least twice the amount. Let's see. Hmm, 
one million forty nine and oh gosh that is so close i reckon if you upgrade the apache prime slightly later you could get it so that both of these towers have a million pops each like that could be a thing like that's definitely possible i'm not gonna lie that's definitely possible but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to let someone else do it and take all the glory. But nonetheless, thank you all so much for watching. We had... I honestly thought we weren't able to do round 99 there because of a fortified DET. So definitely a eyesore if you don't put the Apache Prime in the right place. Somehow putting it locked where the Archmage was was the right decision. But I think that was only because we were utilizing the Apache Primes as Pierce better when it comes to all of its projectiles. And also its razor rotors as well could be a big ish or well, a big um a big help there because razor rotors also targets leads um correctly so therefore it's able to target the DUTs as well, which has the lead property. Let me know what other two tower chimp combinations you would like to see me do. I was thinking of one with the Glaive Lord, where it's also on that square. Or maybe Glaive Lord with another tower on imbalance. Oh, sorry, on balance, sorry. And then try and find a tower which is very good with the Glaive Lord. It would, have also, it would obviously have to be a tower that can target camo balloons because of the glaive lord's lack of default attack of popping camo balloons but utilizing that small circle there that could be good or even like only if yeti and an inferno ring could be a good combination i don't know like etienne can target camos but then the Inferno Ring can then target cameras once the UAV is up. Very interesting, actually. But then again, there's also the purples as well. Yeah, I didn't take that into consideration. There's so many purples around 95. Nonetheless, folks, thank you. And also, a Inferno Ring and Gwen combination would not work because there's no camo popping there. But anyways, this outro has gone on for long enough. Look at the different things you can buy from the featured store. There's also a limited time... Uh, a limited time Obin avatar that you can, can purchase as well. Thank you all so much for watching. And let me know what you'd like to see me do next. Or I could even try and do like a chimp's guide on a map. So I'm thinking of encrypted, but you can only build inside of the crypt itself or haunted but you can only build on the water i don't know i'll leave it up to you thank you so much for watching take care of yourselves everyone